Good evening, everyone. It's still Thursday, August the 22nd, and uh, I'm back for an evening edition of Angry Taxpayer. I had an epiphany today about one of my previous videos, um, and I know what some of you are thinking, uh, that maybe one of those videos needs to come down. In fact, someone wrote to me, uh, and uh, the comment was, uh, the Mushak video was weird. You need to delete it. It undermines all the other good videos, even though the guy is a louse. Well, I appreciate the feedback, and uh, if I'd had 10 messages like that, I probably would have considered deleting that video. Um, the analytics on that video are excellent. So either this particular zoning commissioner or planning commissioner, rather, is, is a real problem, or we have an appetite for uh, gossip and negativity. I'm not sure which one of those things or people like a little satire and that was satire. So I don't know when projectile vomiting became a vulgarity. Uh, some people objected to that, but I think when things change with the planning commission, uh, when the mayor decides that there's some disciplinary action uh, in order or when the behavior of that person changes, I'll consider taking it down. But for now it stays. My regret is attached to my earlier conversation about the city's economics. And uh, I, I understand now why I struggled so much with that. I spent hours doing research and I was using data from the CERC report, which is the Connecticut Economic Research Resource Center, and from uh, the city of Norwalk, uh, which would have been the financial report that came out in January of 2019. So I struggled because the data sets didn't uh, overlap, they didn't dovetail with, with each other very elegantly, and they were different time periods. So I'm going to try and go over the data sets again and, and make it a little easier for people to understand. Uh, so here's the name of it, comparing CERC and City of Norwalk data sets. The first thing that I noticed was that the tax revenue, according to CERC, was $298 million. That was 2016. So uh, tax revenue city of Norwalk, uh, January of 2019 is $312 million. So uh, some of that difference may be attributable to tax increases or to the reval. I'm not really sure which one of those things factored in. Uh, it's possible that CERC doesn't uh, get their data from Norwalk and they're divining it some other way, but I, I find that rather doubtful. So uh, I'm going to now switch back and forth between the two data sets to see if I can find some common themes. According to the city of Norwalk, and this again is from their financial report, revenue from all property taxes, so that's uh, residential property, commercial property, personal property, and motor vehicle, it accounts for 90% of all revenue to the city. So from there, revenue from real estate accounts for 80% of all revenue. Residential real estate is 60% of the grand list or 48% of all revenue. Commercial real estate is 21% of the grand list or 17% of all revenue. And here's where it gets interesting. Apartments are 5.8% of the grand list, less than one half of 1% of all revenue. So for, for those out there who say, well, the more we add apartments, the more we're going to increase our tax base and increase our revenue, 5.8%, uh, which was basically double what the previous year's financial report indicated for apartments because we opened up a bunch of new apartments and we didn't have the uh, expected or consequent increase in revenue there. Tax revenue from uh, CLNP. CLNP is the number one taxpayer. It's at the top of the grand list every year for at least five years now. Uh, they account for 30% or approximately $10 million. Now, that seems like a lot. It is a lot. I think you need to bear in mind, uh, if you live in Norwalk, there's a very good chance that you are a CLNP customer. I am in the second taxing district, so I buy my electricity from SNU, 
I don't know what their arrangement is with CLNP, so I may indirectly be buying electric power from CLNP that way. And uh, although SNU sets the rates very, you know, very low, so I'm glad for that. But I am also a gas customer, an Eversource gas customer. So uh, there's now a conveyance fee for my gas, and uh, I think that's a way for them to recoup some of their property taxes. So. Um, you know, you better believe it. If they're paying $10 million to the city, they're passing it on to the consumers. Now, I want to get to some of the housing uh, data. According to the CERC, uh, we have over 35,000 units. I covered that earlier. 20,000 or 61% are owner occupied. Now, I don't have any data on how many people who live in Norwalk also own investment property in Norwalk, rental property in Norwalk. And, and we know that number is not zero. So it's something more than zero. Uh, I, I wish that there was a way to collect that information other than just grinding out, uh, going through, through the tax collector information and grinding that information out. But assuming it's zero, which we know it isn't, residential homeowners account for 30% of all revenue. That's not including if, if there's a significant overlap between uh, people who reside in their homes and own rental property, and it doesn't include what the, the money that you're giving back through your uh, Eversource bills. So I, you know, I find that very interesting. And uh, here is the last bit of data points, which is jobs, where the jobs come from. So I thought this was really interesting on the city site they have uh, a list of major employers and the top employer, and if you pardon me for a second, here we go. Sorry about that. City of Norwalk, largest employers. That's page 22 of this year's report. So the largest employer is Western Connecticut Health Network, followed by Cablevision, General Electric, Stu Leonard's, uh, MBI, I don't know what that is, Diageo on their way out. Uh, Datto Inc., which is Data Protection Services, and it goes on from there. Uh, but the top three are Western Connecticut Health Network accounts for 1,500 jobs and some change. Cablevision accounts for 1,200 jobs. Now, CERC has the job information arranged a little differently, and there's information that you'll see on CERC's report that you don't see on the uh, city financial page. And I have it written here for you, and I'm gonna peer around the corner, hello everyone. So you can see the number of construction jobs, the number of manufacturing jobs, the number of retail jobs, uh, and so on information, healthcare, so that would cover uh, the Western Connecticut Health Network, and then additional healthcare. And then last but not least, government. So 4,159 jobs are government jobs. We don't know how many of those jobs are held by people who live in the city versus people who do not live in the city. We know from the mayor's dashboard that more people come into the city to work than leave the city to work, but I think it would be very helpful for us to have some hard data on what's going on there. Back in the old days, you had to live in the city in which you held a municipal job, whether you were a teacher or you worked for the government or you were police or fire. That is no longer the case. And I think that some of these trends impact the way the city raises revenue. And this is why uh, homeowners, residential homeowners, those 20,000 of us in the owner-occupied homes, and some of us own rental property. This is why we feel particularly burdened, especially when apartments are only accounting for uh, less than one half of 1%. There are also interesting figures here on the variance from year to year, from 2017, 2018 to 2018, 2019. Uh, the education budget we all know went up 4.2%. Uh, Police and fire went up 3.7%. That budget is $44,000, I mean, pardon me, $44 million. And as we add people to the city, that number is also going to go up. Our debt service increased. We did a good thing. We've you know, increased the budget for economic and community development. And the reason that's good is that hopefully that will be revenue generating in the long run, uh, that 
Uh, by investing in economic and community development, we are investing in our city. We're making our city a better place to live, to work, and to play. Usually that results in more revenue and you don't have to lean on the taxpayers so heavily. But the fact that we continue to lean on taxpayers indicates that maybe the course we're on right now is not is, is suboptimal. So I hope this clarifies any uh, misunderstanding you might have had from earlier in the day. Uh, I'm sorry, um, you know, the person who wanted me to take down the Amushek video, um, I just want to say you're not the boss of me. And have a great night, everybody. Hope to see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.